Hello everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to episode number 10 of Homegrown Heroes over here on FM22. We've finally hit double digits of the series and just wanted to have a quick apology at the fact that the episodes recently have been a bit out of schedule. We haven't we haven't been uploading regularly and we're hopefully going to be back to that regular upload schedule from this episode forward. So we're on the page of Danny Vivian. He has been one of our best players this season, like an incredible average rate and he scored two goals and he's played in virtually every match. 20 appearances is, I believe that's more than anyone else has made yet. Inigo Martin is as well with 20 and nobody else is anywhere near that. In terms of where we are in the league, you can see we are in fifth position. Obviously, you know that we have played a lot of games off camera. I've tried to record this episode so many times, but it keeps glitching for some reason. Um, so, yeah, we've got Celta Vigo and Villarreal, I believe it is, in this episode. We left off last time. It was Real San Sebastian and Espanyol we played. Since then, we lost to Atletico Madrid, which is fair enough, you know, we can understand losing against them. We then went on a three win streak against Victoria Plazen, Real Betis and Desna before drawing back to back with Atletico Pamplona and West Ham before we went and beat uh, Sporting Guion. 1-0 in the league thanks to a Juan Artola 91st minute winner. All in all that leaves us 5th in the table. We're playing 10th place Celta Vigo and 4th place Villarreal today. We do have a game in hand so potentially we, we could be 4th on like merit if we win this match and we could be third by the end of the episode if all goes well in terms of the lineup i believe i have selected my lineup and already sorted out all that so i think we should be ready to just get going into the game i keep having this weird glitch i don't know if you just saw it then when my team was just not like ordered right but yeah if you guys have any fixes for that please let me know because it's so frustrating we are a bit low on fitness. You can see some of the sharpness is not ideal, but this is a team that we're going to go a front three of Inaki Williams up top, Nico Williams and Nico Serrano on the wings. Vencedor and Sanse in midfield with Imanol and Kappa a wing back and a back three of Nunes, Inigo Martinez and Danny Vivian. It's been a really slow start to this match. This is actually the first highlight here and we're past half an hour. It looks like it's going to be sort of ego that have this highlight, but you know if we do win the ball back here, we, we look like we've got a really solid chance at a counter-attack, but it is Celta Vigo. It's Santi Mina plays the ball over to Servi, and he slots it into the near post. That's really poor from our goalkeeper there. Unai Simon, you have to be doing better at your near post. It's actually, like, look at this XG. That's how boring this game has been. It's a decent goal from Celta Vigo, but we've got to be doing better than letting them just open us up just like that. So we go into half-time at... 1-0 down. I'm going to make two changes, bringing on Barenga and Uri for Imanol and Unai Nunes. So another highlight here for Celta Vigo, and they've actually worked the ball into, their, into our box, and they've found Franco Servi again. There's Hugo Malo down the right-hand side, manages to find Mendes into Fran Beltran. There's a really nice ball out wide here from Mendes, and it's a good run from Servi, but it's poor defending from Ander Kappa there. Needs to be marking his man tighter than that. It's our turn here for a highlight. Nico Serrano. Oh, okay, we've actually managed to win the ball back. I was thinking that was going to be a counter-attack from Celta Vigo there, but we've kept the ball. Inaki Williams, come on, find Barenga. He does. Serrano, that looked like a really nice tackle from Tapia. Inaki Williams, oh my god, what a goal. That's got to be offside, right? No, it's a goal. Tenth goal of the season already for Inaki Williams. I think he scored about two last season. It's a really nice tackle from Tapia there on Serrano. And this run from Inaki is beautiful. Nice finish as well. Here we go. We're looking like a revitalized team now with that first goal. Danny Vivian. And a cap and finds Nico Williams. He's done it again. Nico the Goat Williams once again sticks it in this top left corner. He's just incredible. He's so consistent for us. Coming in off this right hand side, he's displaced his older brother on the right wing spot. And he's just look at that. That's beautiful. Great finish from the young Spaniard. It looks like we have another highlight in the 86th minute. We've done well to come back to a 2 2 draw here. And Nico Williams has got the ball. He's looking dangerous. He is. Finds Alex Barenga. Can he find a cross? He's going to take his time and play it back to Sanse. Oh no, don't lose the ball like that. Unai Vencedor loses the ball and then wins it back fabulously. And that actually might give us a better chance. And the Kappa. 
can he go all alone? He goes just over the bar. There might just be chance for one more opportunity for Athletic Club Bilbao here. Sansei on the edge of the box finds Cordoba. And I believe that's offside there. I think I saw that looked offside to me. So yeah, it looks like they're disallowing that. VAR awards the goal. Oh my God. How tight was this? Unai Vencedor finds Sansei. It's a lovely pass to find Cordoba and just not even showing us the lines. What a finish as well. I brought him on for Nico Serrano, who just wasn't really influencing the game too much. And he's popped up with a goal. He's miles on side. What was I thinking? What a finish. 3-2. We have come back from 2-0 down at halftime. Not even at halftime, after halftime. And we cannot throw this away now. 93rd minute. This is our last... Their last gasp opportunity, Fran Beltran sticks it wide, and that should be enough for the three points. What a result. We've come back from 2-0 down, and we've won 3-2 against Celta Vigo. They're a solid team. They're not quite the team that they used to be, but they're still a difficult team to play against, and that moves us into the Champions League spots. Fourth position now for Athletic Club Bilbao. Real San Sebastian also came back from the from from one 0 down to win two one, so we weren't the only team to get a nice comeback victory. But we now move on to play Villarreal away from home in next weekend. So we are back for game number two of the episode. We've got Villarreal, which is a very tough game, especially considering the fact that we're away from home. They're in fifth place, just what two points behind us, I believe. And this is the team that I'm thinking of playing. The only change is I'm going to give Unai Vencedor a little bit of a rest. And we're going to bring Ike Munein in because obviously he's one of our better players. And he's back to fitness now after he was injured for a while. So yeah, he's back now trying to get him in the starting lineup. And let's see what happens. I'm, I would take a draw. 100% I would take a draw right now. The opening chance of the game is a corner for Villarreal, and oh my god, they hit the bar. Juan Foyth out jumping our defence at the back post, and Naki Williams looked like he was on the charge then, but Pedraza with a really nice slide tackle there from the left back. Another corner here. Manuel Trigueros. Sansei manages to clear it. Come on, Nico. What can you do here, Nico Williams? Good tackle from Sergio Rio, but he gets the ball back and a capper with the overlap. Plays it back to Nico Williams. Come on. Ike Munayin on the edge of the box, back to Kappa. This is really nice play. I'm confident we're going to get shot away here. Nico Serrano, you had an absolute sitter then, and he scuffs it wide. I know he's a youngster, and I'm playing him just for like the potential, because I really do believe this kid's going to go far for us in this team. But he's got to be putting away chances like that, especially with Juan Artola in such good form. 30 minutes in and we're already on the third highlight. Gerard Moreno with a fantastic ball and what a cheeky finish there from Jeremy Pino. Is that offside? I'm pretty sure that was onside. I mean, last time round I got this completely wrong when I said I thought something was offside and it turned out to be onside. And yeah, this one here was actually onside as well. Wow. Let's see. Gerard Moreno plays it through and that is tight to be fair. It's a really nice run and it's a very, very nice finish. Ooh, Coquelin, goodbye. That was a bit of a dirty tackle. Thankfully, Ikemanian isn't injured and we do have the extra man advantage now. I'm going to go attacking. I'm going to increase this tempo to try and wear out the opposition. And let's see if we can get a win here. They've made a substitution, brought any Bora on for Antivirus. So, I'm going to make some substitutions. Let's make two substitutions. Bring on Asaya Velibre and bring on Imanol. They're my two substitutions at half time. We need to get at least a point from this game. They're down to 10 men. We can't lose this. This is ridiculous. We are so far into the second half, almost finishing the game now, and there hasn't even been a single highlight. I've made some changes to the tactics. It just hasn't worked. We've we've had XG. We haven't put the ball in the back of the net. We've lost 1-0. And even when they scored, we were still like the better team on XG. And they've just managed to hold on. We didn't really offer anything there. I'm not going to say I'm proud of your efforts. I'm going to say I'm disappointed. We should have won that match. No, I'm going to say we weren't good enough because we weren't. We need to be winning when the opposition goes down to 10 men or at least getting a point. I know it's a really, really tough game. 
away against Villarreal, but they've got they've gone down to ten men. They've got their best central defensive midfielder sent off, and we haven't made them pay for it. That puts us down in fifth position. Yeah, we're only two points off second place, but we're still outside of the Champions League spots. So there we are, sat in fifth position just outside of the Champions League places with three crazy games, four crazy games coming up here. We're definitely going to be playing these two, though. Valencia and Real Madrid, the top two teams in the... No, never mind, Valencia are fourth, but two teams above us in the table. That will be episode number 11. It's going to be a tough episode, but if we can get anything out of that, it might propel our season onto Champions League football. Thank you so much to everyone who did tune in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you there. Goodbye.